Hey everyone, Wonderboard Chap here. I wanted to come in before the video starts and give you a little background here before we get started. So first off, thanks to everyone who viewed, liked, and commented on the first video. It was really encouraging and honestly I didn't expect that reception. So thank you. Um, so I decided to start over, completely fresh in Kingdom Come. I've been hard at work filming and editing, uh, but that doesn't come without its challenges. So for starters, guys, I'm so new to video creation and editing, uh, so I really wasn't sure what software would best suit my needs. I initially recorded roughly four hours of footage for the new episode and spent about another five hours rewatching and editing that down to one hour. Unfortunately, the editing software I chose decided that it wasn't going to cooperate. Like ever. So I had to restart, kind of. I had to re-record my edits, if that makes sense, and then edit it again from there. So if the quality of this first episode is a little rough, that's why, and I sincerely apologize. I'm actively working and improving in a new editing suite that I believe will allow me to push the quality of content that I aspire to put out to you guys. So anyways, please forgive any editing errors in episode one. I promise it's only going to get better from here. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Love you guys. Okay, so she, now she's talking to us. Uh, let's, I guess let's go ahead and start with speech first, uh, since that's kind of the harder skill to level, I feel like, as opposed to agility, vitality, and uh, definitely strength. Well, I, uh, I lost track of time. Yeah, me too, buddy. Well, I hope you didn't fill your head with nonsense. Well, I... There we go. I already got a new level in speech and main level. And it's connected. Love you, Ma. All right, another uh, speech level and main level, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's go get some food real quick. Let's see what else Ma left out for us. A couple apples. Eh. Why? There we go. I just got to stand on the apple to get, uh, or stand on the table to pick up this apple. <clears throat> that's what I do at my house, too. Ma, why'd you put the food out of the, the reach, Ma? We're just going to take all this food. And we're going to eat it. And all this food. Just all of it. I'll just eat a whole bunch of apples. That's what I do after a night of drinking. I wake up and I eat 50 apples. I never go to the doctor. God be with you. Greetings, Henry. God Although when we kill some cows later, we could sell the food from that, but we'll, we'll start here. So we got 40 groschen, so we should be able to get, you know, a little bit of money. She drives a hard bargain. Alright, so what we're going to do now to that we sold all the food to start our perfect start here in Scallets and have a head start at the game is we're going to go around and collect every single flower we can find. Now normally I would sell these flowers to the traders uh, down there, but I think this time I'm gonna hold on to them. Um, I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing a little bit of alchemy uh, in this playthrough, so um, having those you know, on standby, those stocks of flowers will be nice and helpful so we don't have to go out and pick some of these things later. It's like an infinite supply of nettle in this one corner. There we go. We got our first level of herbalism. That's pretty good. Nettle is good, though, because that is what we need for Savior Schnapps. Since we know where to get Belladonna, too, we'll we'll be able to get the recipe fairly easy. We'll just need 500 Groshen, which we'll definitely have before we take off from Scallops and begin our run. Another level of herbalism. So we're not going to be talking to Father just yet. We're going to run through and pick all these flowers so that we can get... Okay, there we go, another level of herbalism. Uh, so that we can get our herbalism level up and just avoid all the quest markers and things from uh, the other quests. So if you guys didn't know, there is actually a lot of stuff you can do in Scallops that will prepare you... Um, for the rest of the world, uh, even for the Cuban attack, there is 
a lot that you can be ready for. You can get your strength levels, vitality up pretty high, and even your main level before uh, you even have to leave scallops, and that makes things a little bit easier uh, when you're released into the, to the actual world. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get as much as we can in this first episode, and uh, we're really going to milk scallops where we can get, without getting caught, of course. So if you guys don't know, uh, the stealth attacks will always work on villagers, no matter what. Um, but the stealth attacks for guards and bandits and, and the like, they have a chance to fail. Um, unless, and this is important, unless they're sitting down, um, you can, sitting down or laying down, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to get that uh, stealth action uh, accomplished. So, out of these starting skills, Horse Nip is going to be the last one you're going to want to unlock. Uh, Flower Power is definitely the go-to here, followed by Leg Day, then Botanist. Keep knocking them out. There we go. There's a stealth level. We want to get this built up as quick as we can because that unlocks the stealth kill. Another level of herbalism. Another level of herbalism. Just reached herbalism level 10. Uh, so we're definitely got to get that leg day perk. Uh, we also get a resistance for free, so that just gives us some extra uh, vitality boost. But then leg day will help us level up our strength, which is really good, especially while we're here at Scallops. There we go, we got our first perk point in strength. I'm up by the uh, training arena, and I think I'm going to um, go get the combat master to have him start walking up here, just because it takes him forever to get up here. I don't want to rot in this hole forever. I feel like I don't belong here. I want to live and see the world. But the world's a dangerous place and I need to know how to protect myself. Spoken like a man. Yeah. And as it happens, he wants to go and pick flowers on the rest chance. of the world. I have to leave. So, are you ready to get stuck in? Oh, how lucky. Uh, yeah, let's go. Yes. All right. I wait on the ground by the sheepfold as usual. Sounds good. All right, so we have just finished picking all the flowers in scallops. So this is the last chest we're dropping off. Uh, all right, so... And as you can see, there are a lot of flowers in scallops. Uh, mainly nettle and dandelion, but uh, those will come in handy later, and we won't have to pick those uh, really ever again. Okay, so at this point, now that we've done all that, uh, let's go ahead and allocate some perk points. Uh, so we have received one perk for our main level, um, and I'm going to go ahead and put that into ascetic uh, or ascetic, however you say that, uh, just so that we can reduce our food consumption <clears throat> over time. That will help out. And then strength, we're going to go ahead and pick up clinch master, that is a necessity, and uh, mule one. And then back over to herbalism. Uh, we've already got flower power and leg day. We're going to go ahead and invest in a botanist. Not that we're going to be selling them, but... 15% uh, higher price for our herbs. Maybe we do sell them. I don't know. We'll see. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. And then we also have some levels in stealth. Uh, one level from uh, attacking the guy who is uh, using or picking up hay, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the only way to put it. Uh, that's all he does. Is he stands there and uh, collects hay. So we've been knocking him out. We've probably done that like 10 to 15 times already. So we have Rain Man or Daring debonair um and i think we're going to pass on these for now until we get to level five because crouching chameleon and stealth kill are definitely something we want to have so uh before we have those other ones so we're going to leave that for now all right so the next task we're up to is we're going to go ahead and do the sword training um oh please tell me this isn't wormwood that i missed okay no good um so the sword training, there's actually a bit of a, a bug with it, so I'll show you guys so, what I'm talking about, but this will help you pick up just a few can't. levels here. Um, Good. It's not going to get you a lot, but it is some warfare levels that you're not going to get really until uh, you're Very fleeing well. from scouts. So. Let's start with the basics. 
We'll go ahead and Keep moving. go through here. Your life never repeat yourself. Yeah, we're never gonna hit him. Very oh, good. All right. Good. Nice. Good. Not bad. Now you're getting it. All right. All right, so here's where you can kind of exploit this. So right after the stabbing sequence, he's going to ask you to go ahead and chain your attacks. Um, and you really only need to chain two of them. But if you give it just, just like about half a second between strikes, you will, uh, you can just keep doing this. And the more you do it, you'll get more XP. You'll get XP for Swordsman, and you'll also get it for um, Warfare. And that'll, that'll come in handy. Just a few couple extra levels to start. So there we go, we got a strength level as well. Seems like there's maybe like a timer on it, and if you don't do all of them, you know, it just eventually kicks you out. It doesn't want you getting too strong, but we're going to milk all that we can out of it. So eventually we're going to, we are going to hit a combo here, um, or a chain strike, just so that we can maybe prolong it. So right here we'll hit one. There we go. So, okay, one of three. So then we'll just go back to what we were doing. There we go. Another more warfare. We got another level of warfare, and we'll just keep doing this. So we've already hit two train strikes, so we're just going to keep hitting them overhead until it kicks us out of this, and uh, we'll move on after that. If we won't fail this quest, it'll pass, and um, there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Kunesh. Um, I feel like he's the next easiest thing to do. We're going to talk to Kunesh and provoke him to a fight. God be with you, Kunesh. What do you want? He's a bit of a grouch. My father sent me to get the coin you owe him for the axe, hammer, and nails. I've got nothing. Clear off. <laughs> We're going to tell him to pay a lot or else. I knew you'd be trouble. Father says if you don't pay up, he'll come here himself and hammer those nails into your hairy ass. I'd like to see him try. Fuck off, you bastard, or your old man will be pulling those nails out of you. I must have misheard you. It sounded like you just told me to clear off. But you wouldn't be stupid enough to think you can steal, not pay your debts, and then try to scare me. Would you? <laughs> you son of a whore. How dare you speak to me like that? Didn't your thieving father teach you any manners? No? Well, I'll teach you then. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get stuck into this combat. We already picked up Clinchmaster, ah! so we're just going to stand here and get him stuck uh, in a clinch loop. Ooh. and just it's the easiest way. You don't take any damage. You can just beat him. You can't beat him the other way and, you know, actually do the man dance with him, but it's like that's the easiest and quickest way is just clinch loop him. Oh, I'm going to take everything you have, Kunish. So we're going to start with your ex. He doesn't have much here, unfortunately. Really, the only thing that he has is the items that we want for father, which are these here. Um, so we'll take those from him. And then we'll take these over here to the charcoal burner. It's worth uh, a little bit, I guess. We'll try to haggle them. Let's see what happens. Sure, why not? Let's see if we can get a little bit more. Let's see if we can get one. Are we agreed? That's better. Dro Drop it more. Okay, so he's not interested. So I guess we're stuck I'll here. I'll go for that. <laughs> well, I guess we got 0.5, which is 0.1 more than you know what we were going to get. So, all right. So here we are. Uh, we got Yaroslav and Janik here, and we're going to grab the handguard from them. Alright, and we have the crossguard. Right, it's very important, we're not going to turn in all these quests when they're done. Um, once you have collected everything, you can come talk to Father, but um, the best thing I've found to do is complete everything except for getting the ale from Teresa, and you can, uh, or uh, Bianca, and you can go and talk to Bianca and get other things from her. Like if you wanted to pick up uh, or, or sell meat to her, you can. If you wanted to buy her savior schnapps, you can. Uh, you don't have to pick up the ale. You can pick up the ale um, if you want to. The problem is, um, that's not really a problem. It's just a little bit of inconvenience. When you are ready to, um, you know, advance and leave Scallops, you come talk to Father, and he'll tell you that the ale is um, it's too warm 
for for the old man. So he sends you back all the way down to the tavern to get new ale, and um, it can just be a little inconvenient when you've you know been here for three four hours doing <laughs> doing you know pretty boring things, just leveling your skills. What do you want, lad? All right, there she goes. We got a free game save there too. We didn't have to use the schnapps. So once she's kind of cleared off a bit, we'll go ahead and uh, do this here. All right, so the catch pole's coming now, so we're gonna go ahead and just run. The unfortunate thing is that he's just going to stand there for the rest of the time, and we would be able to, like, uh, maybe knock her out, knock him out easier if they weren't just standing there, but we are definitely going to want to knock this guy out because he's got the halberd. And the pole arms are so good. So good. We're going to try not to get seen doing as uh, many crimes as we're capable of doing, just because it seems like when you go to Ratai after being transported by Teresa the villagers from Scalitz respawn and if they've seen you committing crimes they report it so as soon as you get to Ratai you're wanted and they arrest you <laughs> and you have to spend 10 days in jail right after finishing the prologue and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let them run all the way over to the meeting spot we're not actually gonna go and meet them just because it'll keep them held up over there which will be nice because when they when you talk to them, they come back over here and they start working the fields. But if you don't talk to them, then the fields here stay empty. Um, or at least just these two guys, and you can easily knock them out. Uh, normally there's a lady here too. I'm not sure where she's at, but um, you can easily knock them out and then go and take out that guard. That's normally the first guard that I take out. Henry. So we're going to knock him out now that she's facing that way. And then we're going to go again and try to get her as quick as possible before she stands up and looks over here or sees uh, the first guy we choked out. But if we can get both of them loot from them what we can. Okay, so all of them are dead now, so um, we received the guard's armor, and actually I made a mistake there. If you do not kill the guards, um, but you loot everything on them, including their weapons, they will come back, stand back up, and they will spawn weapons on them, so you can keep getting those things. I would say that in this area, it's probably more important to get uh, keep the guards that have arrows respawning, um, just because... You have a grindstone here for like swords and axes if you really need it, but um, the arrows, you only have so many. So we'll go ahead and throw all of the guard stuff in here. And eventually we will sell this stuff, but we won't be able to sell it here. We'll have to wait until we have been transported. And we are almost to stealth level 5, which will unlock the crouching chameleon and stealth kill for us. So we just need to keep knocking people out as much as we can.
All right, so the next thing, uh, once you've equipped yourself for, with some guards' weapons, I was able to get Needle and Villager's Hazel Bow. Um, you're going to want to go all the way to the north side of the town by the main gates, and you're going to want to hang a right. And up there, uh, there is a cow spawn. They will always spawn, no matter what. You can kill them as many times as you want, and they'll keep coming back. Um, and you're going to go up there, and you're going to use your sword, and you're going to train it up by just killing, killing those cows. You're going to stab them, whatever you can do, over and over and over again. So as you can see, we're here, and there's no cows here, but if we just simply back up and turn around, and then turn back around, the cows are here now. All you want to do is just, just stab them. They're going to run, and that's okay. And let them run. And we'll just walk back up over here and let them walk back over. They're going to run away just until they get a good enough distance from us that they decide they want to come back. One thing you do need to watch out for is there are some villagers that will walk this trail here. And if they see you attacking the cows, they are going to report it. So here we go. Here's one of them. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to knock him out. We're going to knock him out and we'll probably just dispose of him as well. So you do kind of want to dispose of them a ways away. So the cows are not this fence, but that fence. They're past that. Um, and the reason being is that some villagers sometimes just somehow find them. And then the guards, they'll go notify the guards and they'll come, they'll come running back. Um, and if you're nearby, they're going to accuse you. And pretty much just 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 that you're guilty. So um, we went ahead and dropped him there, and we killed him. And if you get arrested in scallops, you're going you're you die. Sometimes if they get stuck on a tree like this, uh, you can just farm them up here. There we go. So we got a sword level and an agility level. So we got this one stuck here too now. Okay, and we got uh, actually a couple levels of vitality, so we should be fairly close to the level six requirement um, for that. Okay, maybe not. So uh, we're able to pick up a couple or one perk here. So um, we're probably going to go with a long sword. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick that up. Um, vitality. I always pick up sprinter first. Uh, I find that running faster is very helpful. But what I'm doing now is, um, for, for in order for those cows to respond, you got to kind of run out this way. And what I found is coming Don't right up to angry. about here, these front door steps of this shop, and then running back, uh, usually we'll respawn those cows. If they're not there when you get back, but their bodies are gone, you can do what we did when we first got there. And you can just turn around, look at that hay bale, turn back around, and the cows will be there. Then we'll look over here. Okay, so one body's still there. So we probably need to go just a slightly a bit farther but we'll go ahead and just you know we'll just tack this one one thing you can do as well while we're here is you can take this meat off of the cow and I normally come over to about here and I'll go ahead and drop that out of my inventory and as you can see if we go over it'll tell me that I can steal it I can hold E to steal it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it sit there he looks like he's stuck on the fence he might be able to get out but yep okay so we'll give him some space. Okay, and that cow's down, so we'll go ahead and we'll loot him as well. And we'll drop the meat over here. Let's drop it down. Not surprised. Betty was always good with her hands. Kettles You're right for there. Water, baskets for goods and torches for the night. Okay, and now that we're back uh, by the cows, we'll just turn around and check this out. So now that we've gone far enough away for the cows to respawn if you take a look at the beef here you notice now you can pick it up it's not stolen anymore so you can pick this up and sell it to the merchants now at this stage with a lower strength level it's going to take you two to three hits to kill a cow but once you get your strength up higher you can one shot them which makes this go a little bit faster but the beef is going to be our main source of income here so you're just going to going to want to keep killing these guys you'll eventually start leveling up your hunting skill as well um and when you do that you'll be able to harvest things like skins from them.
So, there we go. I've just dropped some more beef on the ground, and I'm just going to keep keep doing this. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop the halberd back here, and I'm just going to over and over and over and over and over again. I'm just going to keep coming back here. I'm going to kill the cows. I'm going to drop beef on the ground. It's not going to despawn, um, and we're just going to build up a good a good pile of beef there. Then we're going to come out here eventually, and we're going to go and sell all of it. But for now, we're just going to build it up there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the sword just because I want to level the sword and the agility so that I can get uh, a high enough agility to use this sword. That'll make killing the cows a lot faster when I'm actually, you know, at the right skill rating for the weapon that I'm trying to use. Faster kills equals more sword leveling, obviously. Okay, so now we've leveled our agility enough to level four. Uh, we still can't use the sword, but we can use the Hazel Villager's Bow, so our minimum agility is level three, so we're actually level ahead. But what we can do with this is we can take it up here over to these uh, sheep over here, and every time we kill a sheep, we're going to get hunting experience, and we're also going to get more agility experience. Since you earn more experience per kill than you do, you know, just simultaneous hits, one hit, you get a base amount of XP, but for the kill, you get more. So if you come here, and if sheep aren't here, you know, just do the same thing. Turn around, turn back around, and you'll see the sheep spawning in. Give them a second, they'll all come in. And when you've picked up too much meat, just like the cows, you can do the same thing. I normally do it over here. I just come over here, and I'll go ahead and uh, drop all the mutton that I have. I'm going to eat this carrot, too. And uh, we'll just let it sit there. When we come back from killing the cows, it will be ready to be picked up, and it will not be marked as stolen. So with all the sheep slaughtered, we can just head back down to the cows, then. This guard has respawned, and look... All of his armor, Welcome, his sword, his bow, and his arrows are back. We had placed him under the tree over here and looted stuff off of him, but uh, he's back. So if you don't kill them, they will respawn like this. And the best thing about this is that you can keep knocking them out, getting the XP for stealth. But you can also put all this gear in that chest up in your parents' house. And later on, I will show you what we do with all that gear. But you can easily make hundreds of thousands of gold with all this gear, depending on how much time you spend here. I'm not going to make 100,000 gold just because I don't want to spend, you know, a year here, but uh, we're going to make a decent amount of gold. Gather up as much as you can. Buy all the stuff you want to buy here because you won't have another chance to buy it. Just keep using these cows and try to uh, cycle the money through, if that makes sense. And we'll just knock him out. Again. And, lucky for us, we also have just picked up our fifth point, uh, or, or I guess rather level in the stealth skills. We should be able to unlock the stealth kill and the crouching chameleon. So one other thing you can do, I've just picked up all of the weapons that we've looted from the chest, is we can improve our maintenance level by just coming in here and using the grindstone here. All right, and as you can see, so all of our weapons now are above 90%. Um, some of them we got up to 100, like the axes and the burger sword um, and the knight's hunting sword, but the falchion, the needles, uh, they're they're pretty close. For our efforts there, we were able to get uh, two points in the maintenance. So if we keep doing that, um, we will have a lot of points in maintenance by the time we are out of here as well. Okay, so once you've got a lot of beef built up that's not marked as stolen, you can pick it all up. It is going to weigh you down considerably, and you aren't going to be slow. But it will uh, it will sell pretty well for you, and you can sell that beef to this guy right here. You can sell it to her over there. You can sell it to the shop, or you can sell it to Bianca in the tavern as well. So as you can see, we're gonna get 310. He only has 80 gold, but that's okay because what he does have is save your schnapps. 
And we want to buy those, so let's see here. So we'll pay 75, or we can pay... Okay, so we don't have enough for all three of them, but we can get two of them. And what we'll do is we'll just keep selling him beef until we've uh, drained his inventory of items that we want. And the next guy we can sell to is actually right next to him. And this guy sells armor kits. Be repair fun. kits of all different types. But he will also buy our food. Good health to you. Let's go ahead and play around a dice. Care to try your hand at dice. Now that we have the agility skills to get a winning hand, let's just bet at everything. Take. Baskets for goods. We'll see whose side Lady Luck is on. Alright, so uh not not great, but keep rolling. Stop right where Not your lucky day, you fucker. You were seen Well, you won't What is he what the hell are you talking about? Let's just try it. Enough. No nope. what impertinence is this? <laughs> we didn't get a speech level though. Do you really want me to lose my temper? But if that's how you want it, you idiot. I'm certainly not afraid of you. Alright, fine, we'll pay the price. Oh, well, you go to jail, you die. Here you are. You've paid for your crimes. Hey, you interrupted my dice game. An asshole. I'm feeling lucky today. Oh, we can bet more now, though, for some reason. Let's see, three sixes. That's not bad. That's 600 points. Oh, there's a fourth one, actually. Uh, I'm just going to take it. Now you. Strong linen, delicate velvet, beautiful and functional. I don't believe it. Lace, linen, and silk. Come right up and take some home. This'll be the one. We'll see. Red, long and strong. Anything you need. Hey, he's getting some plot armor right now. Look at that. You just won. Money, money, money. Might have to kill him. Right, so now it's time to uh, go on a killing spree in Scallet. So we're going to start with this guard down here because he seems to be the easiest one to get. There we go. All right, so he's down. We don't need him to respawn with gear because we're we're pretty much done here. We're, we're wrapping up now. And doing all of this, you probably will land yourself a jail sentence if you kill the people in the center of the town. I normally do it anyway just because the traders have... Uh, pretty decent uh, equipment on them. This over here can be a bit difficult, but I'll show you how we handle that. So I've just knocked this guy out here, and uh, the guard is actually coming up from the steps down there. So if he comes all the way up here, we're going to uh, we're going to kill him too because he's got all of our money on him. He's been the guard that has consistently been catching us for crimes. He should see the dead body. Oh, maybe he's not going to see it. Okay, let's. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. All right, let's try to get this guy. Oh. Okay, yep, we got him. We got a stealth point as well. That's pretty good. And we'll go ahead and just take him. 
the guards up there don't ever really seem to notice anything. You can kill them, uh, and they will just respawn during the, um, the, I guess, the escape from Scallops, and they'll be in um, Ratai when you get there. Right, so I've just realized, I don't think we got all of our Groshen back from that guard, uh, which is kind of disappointing, but what are you going to do? Dropping a lot of save points. Um, what you can do is you can come and pick up the ale from Bianca. You look like something and she'll give you, I think it's in. three uh, savior schnapps for free. For father. A pal? I've got something special for you. Is that so? Now what would that be? So this should be our reward. Your yep, there we go. Savior schnapps. Really? Savior schnapps. You're an angel. <laughs> I hope you'll thank me properly later. Mm. That I will. Okay, yeah, so they gave us five. So we should be up to, I think, 11 now. And we've used a few, but yeah, so we have 11. So you can almost get, or, you know, around 20 in scallops. We got caught by the guards doing some killing, so here we are. This is always oh, not dead yet. There we go. Nice. I hope a guard catches you with that weapon. Right. No. It's weird, you can't actually kill him, but he'll come back. Okay, now once you guys have done everything you wanted to do in Scallops, um, you just come back here and dump all of your stuff inside this chest. And just to show you guys how much we were able to accomplish here, you can see our main level is at 16. We haven't put those points yet. Um, 17 strength, 13 agility. We've managed to completely max vitality. Speech is at 4. And we got some bonuses going there too. Combat-wise, we're up to 18 with a bow, 8 with warfare. And one with sword, um, or one perk point available for our, our level 10 sword. Um, herbalism, 17. Drinking, 2. Uh, hunting, 13. We have unlocked beef tartar. And then uh, maintenance level 2. You could uh, bring that up. I wasn't really uh, too concerned with it, but um, stealth, we got that leveled up as well. Everything else is going to have to kind of wait until we're out of here. So as you can see here, the town is completely empty. Everything is dead, um, except for, you know, the essential characters we can't kill. Father said the ale was cold. Right, so we went and got a new pitcher of ale. Now we can talk to Father and actually start forging this sword and move out of the prologue. Fine lass, eh? Now stop staring at her and come and see this. You still have a lot to learn. A messenger. He was in a hurry. What's happened? Take the sword, go into the house, and grab anything else important from the trunk. Go to the castle. Hurry, what about you? Your mother is in the village. I'll 
I'll fetch her and we'll follow right behind. I'll go with you. No. You'll do what I say right now. Give the sword to Sir Isaac. If anything happens, he'll take care of you. He owes me. Right, so you can kill this guy that's chasing you. You just gotta, the best thing I found is have a headcracker, try to get up to him, there we go, see it activated. So now he's down, he's uh, he's not dead yet, but we can just kill him. So that took me about five tries, I think it's only a 10% chance that that activates, so. But if you can get up to him and, and get a free swing uh, on his head, you have a much better chance of, of beating him. You're not really gonna have much luck trying to beat him in single combat. He's just, uh, he's designed to beat you. So, and then what we'll do now is we'll just put all this armor on. He's not going to need it anymore, but we will. And what we're going to do with all of this is we're going to go and come down the hill here. We're going to see a number of cumins start coming that way. So there's one. There's going to be a few more. Uh, there's four more right there. And what we want to do is we want to try to beat them to the house here so that we can save Teresa. Um... And then also we're going to want to get on the horse before they get there. And we can kill all of these guys pretty easily um, in mounted combat. Give a little poke and then run. We'll get on our horse. And what we want to do is we want to run. Now you don't want to go too far because you don't want to activate the cutscene. Uh, and where you'll activate it is right down there where the center of the cursor is at. So you just want to kind of come this way. Get a good head start. Run up and hit them as you go by. And this will do a fair bit of damage. And there's there's quite a few of them coming too, So you, and you can kill all of these guys. What we're gonna do is, um, since there was a patch to take out um, over-encumbered horseback riding, you can no longer do that. Um, what we'll end up doing is we'll just pick up the best yeah. gear and, and take it with us to Talmberg, and we'll sell it or store it, whatever we need to do. But uh, for anybody who has seen other videos on, you know, best start guides, that does not work. You cannot, um, you know, I guess don't waste your time filling up your inventory with um, those items. It can be a bit tricky to hit them on horseback, so you just got to keep trying. Just keep going back and forth. They, they won't hit you. You don't want to slow down around them because they can pull you off your horse, and you definitely don't want that. If they do pull you off, though, just, you know, try as hard as you can. Get back on that horse um, and can't yeah. keep running back and forth, back and forth. The mission won't fail. Um, yeah. You won't just, you know, automatically be killed if you don't kill these guys in a certain amount of time or um, start the cutscene quick enough. The only thing that, that will kill you is if you wander too far um, back that direction. Yeah. And really, there's two bridges, and you don't want to cross those bridges, and you don't want to go farther than the furthest bridge. If you go farther than those, then you will probably, uh, the game will kill you intentionally. Um, you're not supposed to be able to go that far, so I'll just ride down there and show yeah. you where where the cutoff is. So these humans right across um, some people yeah. have said you can't hit them off I haven't been able to do it um, the hitbox seems a little janky so you don't want to run across that bridge it will kill you if you go across it 
And then this bridge as well. You don't want to go across this one, but yeah. you can stand here and just farm these cumins that are coming across the yeah. bridge if you really want to. And you don't want to store any of the stuff that you're picking up from these guys on your um, yeah. on your horse either. Okay, so there, we actually managed to kill one um, on the horse. So his horse has fallen, and now we should be able to yeah. take him out on foot. And what this will do is this will allow us to kind of maximize yeah. our gains. We can pick up the most ex expensive armor pieces, you know, the best uh, value to weight, and yeah. keep those. You can sit here and farm this as much as you want, but again, you're not going to be able to ride while you're encumbered, so keep that in mind. Make sure you loot the horses as well, because these saddles can sell for a pretty good amount of money, and they will increase your horse's uh, carry weight once you get your horse. These, these villagers that are laying around as well do have, you know, Groshen on them, so you can loot those as you see them as well. And there's a few horses scattered around. Um, there's two human horses yeah. down this way um, that I do recommend looting because I have found noble saddles on them, which are uh, pretty decent. I actually, in a previous playthrough, had a level four noble saddle with four saddlebags, and it uh, put my horse's carry weight up to over 400, which was pretty good, so... I said just come through here we'll loot these guys for anything that's over 200 worth and then as we start to accumulate too much weight um like we already are right now we will just start dropping things that are um too heavy and don't make a lot of sense for us to be carrying so i'm not going to take the the weapons the armor i feel sells for for more you might be able to carry more weapons um if you just carry those but I'll leave that to you guys figure out how you prefer to optimize it. I prefer to do it this way. Um, now, you can ride the horse just a little bit over yeah. encumbered. I don't know what the actual cutoff value is, but um, so keep that in mind. So we're at 245 weight uh, over encumbrance, and we're still able to ride. And I've only been collecting things that are worth 200 or more so far, so should have a pretty good profit. Like I said before, you don't want to put anything actually on the horse's storage since you lose this horse. Okay, so it appears you can be decently yeah. over encumbered, but not too over encumbered. I've tried to hop on the horse before at like 700 pounds um, and it did not work, so. Uh, just keep in mind, so these are the saddles you want to look for. These are the noble saddles, so we're going to try to <laughs> kill this horse so we can get that. Of course, he's going to he's gonna try to run. He's a bit stuck. Okay, he's dead. And we'll kill this horse as well. So that has one saddle bag. I'm sorry, that's a hunter saddle, actually. Okay, now we're too overloaded. So what I'll do here is I'll just go through and, and drop the least uh, expensive item. So it's probably going to be this Hungarian Saber, to be honest. There we go. It's a noble saddle with four saddlebags. Okay. And we'll go ahead and continue yeah. with this here. We'll go through the, the cutscene. So once we get here, this is very important. Now that we're bleeding and we have the riders chasing us, um, we just need to get to Talberg. You don't want to try to fight these guys. They're never ending. They'll keep coming. And uh, if they pull you off your horse, uh, remember you're overloaded and they will probably chase you down and kill you. So normally about right here is where I'll kind of give my horse a break and I'll just gallop. 
Uh, they can catch up as much as they want. It's not going to matter. Um, they start hitting you with arrows, so do pick up your pace. But as long as you kind of move back and forth, you should be okay. They're not going to. They're not going to get you. Oh. <laughs> well, they got me. But now that the uh, stamina is refilled, now we can just sprint. Um, or I guess fast. Run faster. So the way there. All right, and now we're here in Talmberg. We're going to go ahead and have a rest here. We're doing an overlay here just because of the um, problems with editing here. So, uh, so now we have a meeting with Lady Talmberg. We're going to run through here. And we're going to wake up by uh, Robard. And um, now while everybody's distracted, we're going to go around. We're going to unlock this room next to us, choke these people out, and then we're going to unlock the chest next to us and steal items out of it. Once we're done with that, we're going to go to Robard and um, talk to him. We're going to see Sir Radzig and everybody else come in here. Halt! Who goes there? Lucifer and all his minions! Who else, Rubber? Sir Antig! What a relief! Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Skalix. Are you mad? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey! Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! All right, now that we're done with that, we have to go ahead and do our watch. So we're going to find this guy here. We're going to talk to him real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and do our watch here. So we'll just set a bunch of hours to skip ahead. It's going to fast travel. So now we're going to go up into this guard house here. Excuse me. Um, and while the guards are out looking at the army, we can just come here and loot everything we want. No one will catch us. And this will help us get out of Townberg later. We can just steal everything, and we'll have the armor ready to go later when they suggest that we do that. So we'll just steal everything, take these shields, unlock this chest. Here's where the armor's contained. We'll take a lockpicking perk here for lasting lockpicks. And we'll go ahead. So now that all that cutscenes are done, we're going to go to the trader. We're going to get the 10 lockpicks from him. We had stored all of our stolen goods in the chest next to the bedroom when we spawned in Townburg. Um, so we want to get all that back since we broke our lockpick. So we're going to buy all these from him. Um, we have 1.1k, so we're good. We can haggle a little bit, but it's not a big deal. We can come back and buy stuff from him whenever we want. Now we'll go over to the guard here and we'll work on getting our way out of here. We already have the gear we need to get out of here, so we'll just go ahead and progress the dialogue options and um, we'll have the ability to get out when we are ready to, which for us, we're going to basically get out of here right after this. All we need to do is go and grab all of the gear that we've saved up. So here we are. We have grabbed our stuff next to the room here. And now we are down at the tavern outside of the Tomberg Castle. We're going to get the um, stuff stored away. And now we are very lightly armored. This is going to be useful for when we go to Scallet so that we can save uh, some carrying space. So now you want to make your way down this way towards this uh, camp here. And you want to come down this way. And once you get about to the end of this building here, you will hit the cutscene for uh, traveling to Scallets. You won't have to walk all the way back. So we'll lose our horse. Okay, so now that the cutscene's all finished up, um, I recommend just looking through these bodies. There's not much there. 
Um, but if you're really struggling with aggression, you can scrounge just a couple from each of them. I'm not going to, um, because it's really only about one Groshen on each. So here's our first encounter. What's it's that? pretty easy, just this looter. He'll go down pretty pretty quickly there. There'll be a looter up here, and he's just going to take off and run up into the hills there. You can chase him down if you want. He doesn't really have anything on him. Um, I'm going to let him be. But for the next thing you could do, and that I'm going to do, is I'm going to go... You want to look for this building over here. If you look at it on the map, it's this area right here. Now, you want to be careful when you get over there because there are about six bandits inside of there. And they're rather high level with pretty decent gear. So, um, if you're, you know, don't have very good armor or you're not, you're new to the game, don't really have a good understanding of the combat, I would highly recommend you not do this yet. I'm not going to do it here solely for the fact that I don't have good armor on. I intentionally took some bad armor. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to raid this chest. And as you can see, there's some pretty decent stuff in here. Um, you know, we have there's over 4K worth of items in here, um, and they're all very good. I'm just going to go ahead and go in and progress the quests here. So we've got another looter up here. Again, it should be a relatively easy fight. If you run up to them before they can stand up, you can get these... Sometimes you get those free stabs. I wasn't uh, lucky that time, so he's surrendering. I'm not going to uh, do that, so let's see. This guy has one Groshen. Not really worth it, but... He did have some Marigold, which I'll take. So then this is where you want to end up. You want to end up right here. This is the main gate to Scalettes. It's here on the map. And go ahead and go inside. Now there are a couple things you do want to loot here. The Bailiff here always has this short sword, this shard. It's a decent sword. And he's got a little bit of Groshen on him. And then you're also gonna want to loot Bianca's body. So Bianca's body is just over here and she also has some savior schnapps on her. So we can take those and then we'll just head up to where our parents were killed. We're gonna enter our quick cutscene. Right so now we can loot the parents. Sometimes they have some Groshen on them so just one but that's all right. And now this next part, we have to go to this dog that's barking, and we're going to find Zibashek there trying to loot a body, and the dog's going to be protecting him, and we just want to walk up to him. It doesn't really matter what choices you make here, dialogue. If you don't want to fight him, you kind of want to choose the more passive choices, but if you don't mind fighting him, you can be a little more aggressive with it. Seems to me that dog knows exactly what he's going to. Am I? You think I'm as bad as you? <laughs> So we'll go ahead and fight him, and we'll just get him into a clinch, clinch loop, head cracker activated, so he should fall, but That's right. he's just going to run now. Tail and, run, you bastard. and we can take the spade, which we're going to need. And now the dog over here is just guarding the master. It does have a little bit of grush, and you can take that. And now this next part's really important. So you want to go up to your house, but before, before you dig their graves, you want to go inside and take all of your items out of that chest. What that's going to do is, when the cutscene happens, you know, you're going to be encumbered. You're not going to be able to fight um, Runt very well, but it's okay because you're designed to lose that fight anyway. Uh, there's no possible way you can beat him. So we'll just come in here. You can see all the stuff that we had from when we were at Scallops is still in this chest. And we'll take all of that. Um... Now, according to some other guides, you do sometimes lose items when you get transported, so uh, the recommendation is that you drop a save here in case you lose certain things, like even your Groshen can be lost, so you drop a save there just in case you need to uh, more or less reload that save, just to re-roll the items that are lost. So once you're done, just come over here. Once you've saved your game and you're sure that you've done everything you've wanted to do here, go ahead and start digging. Alright, so now we've been saved by Teresa, and this is where the game is really going to start to take over and be, you know, ours. So we're going to, Teresa's going to transport us to her uncles in Ratai, and that's where we want to be. We're going to wake up there. You can skip through all the dialogue, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you'll be able to sell some of your stolen items to uh, Miller Peshek, and that is how I achieved the best start in Kingdom Come Deliverance in 2024. We have almost max stats on our basic stats and then um, have a pretty decent level in our swords and our bows 
and we have a very good foundation to just really take advantage of the next few stages of the game here and continue to level.